Okay, so we're on to section four and I just thought I'd include this because this is really one of the benefits and possibly one of the misunderstandings of code first approach. So what we're actually going to do, we've just created in the last section, we've just created our status entity and our associated status table in the database. What we want to do now is actually add some values into that table. So let's take a look at the next steps. So we're going to, in order to do that, we're going to create an empty migration. We're going to add some SQL insert commands into that empty migration. And then we're going to update our database. Now, why are we doing this? Okay, so we could just go directly to Enterprise Manager and just manually edit the table and put our values in like that. You could do that. You could write some SQL in Query Explorer in Enterprise Manager and you could do it that way. The reason we're doing it this way is really speaking to the whole benefit of code first approach and the fact that you're going to have a series of migrations that you can run in sequence that will basically be allow you to rebuild a new database at another destination. So effectively what you're doing is you're building up this stratified layer of gradual updates um, to your database and that includes changes and all that kind of great stuff that means you can run it against another system and populate your database in exactly the same way that you have already done. And it also means that any data that needs to be there or reference data, such as we're putting in here, is already there. So I'm just gonna show you very quickly uh, the article in the, the blog, just to, same thing, same workflow, just to show you a visual representation of what we're gonna do. Um, the workflow of our task is very simple. The task can be in to do, it can be in progress, and it can be in done. So what we wanna do is we wanna add those text values into our status table. So let's start to do that. So I'll just get that out of the way. I will clear the PowerPoint, our favorite thing. So the first thing we want to do is we actually want to create an empty migration. So again, we go back to, not Package Manager Console, actually it says Package Manager Console. And we want to do Add Migration. And we're gonna call it something. Uh, let's say, um, Add, not Ass, <laughs> Add Status Seed Data to DB. Now, because we've just created a previous migration, um, add status to DB, and we've not made any other changes, when we create this migration, we get a migration, sure enough, and there it is in our migrations folder with a timestamp, but you'll see the up and down methods are completely empty, there's nothing in there, because there, is, there has been no changes, because our latest migration has already been run, and all the changes have been applied. So what this allows us to do then is actually we can manually add and edit things into here. So again, one of the misconceptions with code first is that you have limited control over your database and there are certain things you just can't do with code first. In fact, you can through a bit of a, I suppose a bit of a hack, you can actually use a SQL command with, from within your migration and then just basically add in some SQL, which is what we'll do here. So we're going to add into our status table and the name field, values. The first value we're going to add is to do. Now, know I'm using single quotes uh, here. That's how a string is kind of delimited within SQL and I'm putting a semicolon within the SQL statement just to keep it tidy. You don't really need that, I don't think, but I just do that anyway. And all we'll do is we'll just copy this three, two other times. Goodness. I'm using a new keyboard and there's a function key and a control key and they're right next to each other and I keep pressing the function key. When I mean to hit the, co the control key, it's getting quite annoying. Probably more annoying for you watching me doing this. So exactly the same command and uh, what is the value in uh, to do in progress? And I think the last one is done, isn't it? Let me just check my workflow. I think that's what it was. I've forgotten already. Yep, in progress and done. Cool. So again, just to go over it again, we've created an empty migration. We've manually put our own statements into the up method. If we wanted, we could put some stuff in the down method where we would delete these values. In fact, you probably actually should do that. Um, 
I'm not going to bother doing it here, but that's something you can do yourself. But really, whatever you do here, in the down method, you should do a respective rollback of that. So we'll maybe comment that in. Just, just to keep it um, correct, okay? And then we just save that. And then the last thing we really need to do is update our database. Now, before we do that, I just want to say that, you know, here we're doing SQL. We could actually run that, as I said, in Enterprise Manager, just a new query. And we can put that SQL in here. But the problem with that, or not the problem, is that if it doesn't really leverage the advantage of having a migration-based approach. Because if you then want to stand up another database on a different platform in a different environment, you know, uh, production replica environment, for example, you're going to have to remember to manually put that uh, put those values in and you'd have to write separate SQL scripts. Why do that? You may as well leverage the power of migrations, but you could do it that way. The thing I did want to just labour the point of is we're only, uh, if you go back to the migration, we're only putting in uh, the name value. Fine. We're not putting in an ID because it's an identity column. If you don't know what an identity column is, just to clarify, if we do design in that table, and we have our ID column selected. I'll just sort these. There's this thing here called identity specification and identity increment. So it is identity, identity increment is one, and the identity seed is one that starts at one. And if we actually go back to this migration here, that's um, basically what this command here did. So it means you don't actually have to specify an ID value. The database will do it for you. It will start at one and it will increment it by one. So that's why we don't actually have to um, supply that value. So all that is left to do is we just need to update our database. Okay, that's apparently been run. If we go back to our database and we just run our own query, that's gone a bit weird. Let me do a new query. There we go. It's a bit strange, doesn't it? So if we just do use, uh, what's the database called? Taskmaster. And then select everything from status. And I've realized that's probably not a great name for a table in, in a database because it's a reserved word. So we'll just delimit it with uh, square brackets so it doesn't get confused. And uh, function F5 in my instance. There you go. Our values have actually been added. So. This is a very quick section just to, to show you that you can actually use uh, the migrations to add reference data into your tables. And it also has the added advantage that when you then want to stand up another environment, all your database is re replicated in its entirety. So it's very powerful. So with that, we'll go on to the next section. And so in part five, we're going to actually create our task class, create a migration to migrate it to our database. But then we're going to make a mistake and this section really tells you how to deal with those mistakes in your migrations.